What's up guys, it's Alex the Magician here and in this video I wanted to uh, do a quick overview of how to play Conflux uh, and specifically how to play Conflux when you're starting as Luna. Now Conflux is a pretty good town. Uh, the one thing that it has going for it is that you have the Magic University and in that you can actually buy Earth Magic to your hero so if you don't happen to uh, get earth magic as you're leveling your hero. You can always buy it in the magic university and the other thing that makes conflicts really good is Luna uh, Luna is in some ways broken. Uh, she's really really good because She can do a lot of sick stuff with just her firewall and pretty much no army She can take consists hives pickets on just pixies and firewall. She can do breaks uh, like this break uh, of Nagas, she can do that with no problem with just her firewall and pixies. So she in, is in some ways broken, in some ways OP, but there are some things, uh, some limitations that she has as well, and I'm going to cover those also. I'm not going to be talking about Conflux if you're starting for Grindon or Might here or something like that, which are options, there are viable options too, but I feel like Luna is the strongest and it kind of is what makes Conflux OP. Um, and actually, if you learn how to play Luna, that's going to help you with other towns as well, because sometimes you're going to get Luna in the tavern and sometimes you're going to get her in a prison. And if you know how to play with her, if you know how to play with her well, uh, when that, whenever you actually get her with other towns, you can basically main her and use her, uh, and that's going to help you a lot. It's going to help you play faster. It's going to help you kind of break the game, basically, by doing what Luna does. All right, so what do we look for with Conflux, and specifically with Luna? So first of all, Conflux, when you're starting for Luna, you're going to be usually paying uh, a lot of money for Conflux. Uh, you're probably going to be paying something like 7k when you're trading. Uh, I just had a game where I played uh, Conflux against Rampart, and I ended up paying 7.1k for blue Conflux. So what that means is that on turn one, your first priority is going to be to gather as much gold as possible. And not only to gather gold that you see next to the road, but also to take objects like ruins and churchyards. Uh, there actually is a guide on how to take ruins in on day one uh, that Xenofex did. I'll actually leave the link to that guide in the video description below. You guys might want to check that out and learn how to do that. That is going to help you a lot uh, because ruins do give you money and they also give you some vision, so that does help. Now, assuming that you get enough gold, assuming that you're actually able to collect gold, take ruins, uh, also the churchyard, I do have a guide on that. I'll also leave that in the video description below. And assuming you did that, then what? So with Luna, the main things you're going to be looking for is how to get her experience and spell power as soon as possible. This is a little bit different than what you have with other towns, especially when you're playing warrior heroes like Shakti or Galthran or Dracon. With them, army is going to be a bit higher of a priority, I would say, than experience and spells. But with Luna, her spell power and her experience is going to be the highest priority. So you're going to be looking on turn one and two how to get her as much experience as possible in things like treasure chests, uh, things like gazebos um, uh, and the Pandora boxes. And you also want to uh, get as much spell power as you can as well, like in the Schools of Magic, the Star Axis, and also this object, the Colosseum of Magi. And also, if you happen to see the Altar of Sacrifice, that can also help because you can sacrifice artifacts with Luna uh, for experience. So sometimes when you get a bunch of useless artifacts, you can also level her up that way. Now, the other thing that you do want to know and something you want to scout as early as you possibly can is what kind of a break are you facing? Because with Luna, everything is going to revolve around Luna and around her firewall. So you're going to be wanting to do a lot of the fights with her 
and you're gonna want to you know replenish her mana as much as possible so that she can do the fights and you're probably gonna want her to do the main break that's kind of the baseline mindset that you're going into this with if you have a break like Nagas, uh, or anything like Unicorns, Black Knights, Champions, Cavaliers, Pit Lords, uh, anything like that, you can burn those quite easily. Actually, with a break like this, I think that I would probably be able to break somewhere around 115, maybe 116, with pretty much no army, with just Pixies and Luna's Firewall. But, there are times when you can actually... Um, get blocked by things like ranged guards. So if this was something like Cyclopes or Enchanters, uh, or even if you have blocks in the desert, like these Ice Elementals, or something like Ifrit Sultans, um, or really fast units like uh, Phoenixes. Uh, well, Phoenixes are also fire resistant and dragons as well. Those things are really bad for Luna, right? Because she's not going to be able to burn any of that. So... If you happen to have a break like that, if you happen to have a break that Luna is not able to burn, then you need to think of a different strategy that you're gonna play with. Uh, and that strategy could be to go for Resurrect so that you can actually get some army and you can resurrect the army and do the break. That's actually what I did last game. I had Magic Elementals on break, but I was able to get six angels and I had Jadit and I had um, uh, hero was scholar so I was actually able to teach Luna resurrect and I was able to do the break on 117 with just six angels and resurrect or uh, the other option would be if you have a break like that but you don't want to go for resurrect or you don't want to take the chance like you don't have a hero like Alamar or Jadit and you don't necessarily want to take the chance in the mage guild then you may want to main a might hero you may want to main somebody who can actually do the break, uh, depending on what the break is, though. Because, you know, things like, uh, let's say if you have uh, Ifrit Sultans, you can't necessarily burn them, but if you happen to get a Firebird, then you can actually slow them, and maybe you can actually do the fight with slow. So you need to look at this uh, on a situation-by-situation situation basis. And uh, then when you see the break, you're because you're not going to be able to scout the break all the time on turn one. Sometimes when you get a really bad break and you scout it on turn one, you want to restart because uh, it can be much more complicated to do a break like uh, Gold Dragons or something with Luna than uh, it is to just take another chance at another map. But if you do have, um, you know, a break like uh, Ifrit, maybe not, maybe not the upgraded kind, you can't burn them, but let's say you can slow them. You can get mass slow, so maybe you want to main Grindon in that case. So there's a lot of different situations. The point is, is that you want to pay attention to the break. You want to try to scout that as soon as possible, and you want to then make a determination based on that on who's going to do the break. Is it going to be Luna? Is the break going to be favorable to Luna or not? Now, the other thing that I want to draw your attention to is while army objects are not as crucial for Luna, I would say they're still pretty important. And this comes from experience of actually playing. You can actually do a lot of stuff without any army with Luna. Like I've done breaks on 114 with no army. And the problem is with that, uh, you're actually going to be risking getting blocked in the center if you get blocked by like range guards like these ice elementals or let's say these phoenixes right or something like dragons uh, or whatever if you have any of those blocks then you can't really do anything with luna you're gonna have to back up and waste time and gather army before you can actually come back and do and clear those blocks so you kind of want to have that balance, right? First, you do want to level uh, Luna's um, Firewall, and that is a priority on turn one as well, because uh, Advanced Firewall, even if you get Earth Magic offered on the next level up, and if it's uh, Advanced Fire Magic or Basic Earth Magic, you want to get Advanced Fire Magic, because that is what's going to give you the three Hex Wall instead of the two Hex Wall that you get with Basic Fire Magic which is going to help you uh, do a lot of fights. So you can't, uh, there's a lot of fights that you can't do with a two hex wall that you will be able to do with a three hex wall. Like for example, consas, pickets, uh, you need a three hex wall to do those most of the time. So, 
and while that's what you do on turn one and two, uh, maybe turn three, you want to just get Luna as much experience as possible and as much spell power as possible, then you want to transition into starting to take objects that actually give you army. So like hives, consas, uh, pickets, those are actually pretty easy to take with Luna as long as you do enough damage to actually uh, one shot or kill things with a double wall. And I'll actually uh, leave the guides that I did to those in the video description below as well so you guys can check that out. But the important thing is that you do want to start snowballing an army so that when you go for the break, even if you do the break without any army on let's say just pixies or just an angel or something like that, uh, then you want to give the army to Luna so that she can do fights like these ice elementals as well, right? So that's kind of the balance that you want to have. So first, level Luna, uh, get her as much spell power as possible, and uh, then start going for hives, uh, pickets, and consons. Now, the other thing that you do want to pay attention to are the guards, right? So when you have guards like ranged guards, like this guard here for the uh, Pandora box, this guard here for the hive, this guard here for the hive, that actually makes it very difficult because Luna cannot do the ranged fights with her firewall, right? She cannot do those until she gets some army. Like if you had a couple of angels, sure, you can do these fights. But until you can do that, until you can actually snowball a couple of angels or some wyvern or cyclops or something, you need to have objects that you can burn pretty easily with guards that you can burn pretty easily. So like this, for example, this can be burned pretty easily, right? And uh, this can be burned pretty easily as well. So in this case, actually, I would probably consider taking a restart because all of the objects that are close by, like this hive, like this hive, and um, this Pandora box here, that's actually something that I cannot burn very easily. So I will actually probably consider a restart, right? And once you actually snowball some army, then you can actually start using other heroes to start doing fights, especially when you get a couple of angels, then you can start using your side heroes and doing a lot of other fights so that you can actually preserve Luna's mana and Luna's movement. So remember that everything is gonna revolve around Luna. That means that you need to protect her and you need to preserve her moves and her spell power, or uh, I mean spell points as much as possible. All right, guys, I think that was about everything that I wanted to share with you in uh, this video, in this overview. So as I mentioned, I will have the videos to uh, some of the guides in the description below. So check those out. Those will help. And at some later point, I will give you guys a demonstration on how to actually do Luna. In this case, I'm not going to do that just for the sake of making this video shorter. But the last thing that I will mention is that obviously you do want to learn how to do fights with her and how to do fights with the firewall. I'm not going to be talking about that in too much detail here because there are just so many different situations and so many different spots that you can be in that you really need to have your own experience to actually understand how to do some of those fights. I think maybe later on I will do a more complete guide on Luna where I kind of do an overview of how to do fights of um, pretty much uh, every creature that she can actually fight. But for now, I'll just mention that just practice, guys, and uh, you will see how the units move, how their AI works, what their aggression is, and things like that. And you'll start, start to learn how to use the terrain and how to actually be able to manipulate them so that they actually run into your firewall and so that they die. And that's going to be the main thing. You are probably going to die a lot when you uh, first start playing with Luna because it's really easy to die with her. I even do it sometimes still. And when I first started playing with her, like first couple of days were just me dying constantly. But once you learn her, uh, I think it's very, very rewarding and very fun, I would say, to play Luna. I would say she's my favorite hero uh, to actually play. And I think for that reason, I kind of like playing Conflux the most. Because you, honestly, you're, you just feel like you're kind of hacking the game when you play with her because you can pull off so much sick stuff with just her firewall and basically no army. 
But yeah, guys, uh, I am going to end the video here, and I do hope that you found this useful. And if you guys do want to see more Heroes 3 content, I actually stream live on Twitch. At the moment, it's Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday, starting around noon Eastern European time. So if you guys are interested in that, you can follow me on Twitch, and you'll be notified when I go live. And feel free to subscribe to this channel as well, as I do release new guides and new Heroes 3 videos uh, just about every week. So if you subscribe to me, you'll be notified when I release more videos. So thank you guys for watching, and stay tuned for more videos.